Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture seven on animal kingdom. So till now we learned about different phyla which belong to kingdom Animalia. So till now we learned about phylum Porifera, phylum Coelenterates, phylum Tenophora, phylum Platyhelminthes, phylum Eschelminthes, phylum Annelid, phylum Arthropoda. In today's class, we will learn about a different phyla, which is the phyla mollusca. So, uh, starting with the basic characteristics, we know that all the organisms that belong to kingdom Animalia are multicellular. That is, they are made up of many cells. Also, they are heterotrophic in nature. That is, they cannot make up their own food. They are dependent on other organisms for their food. Next. They can be divided on the basis of the level of organization. We have already covered the cellular level of organization, which is seen in the Poriferans. Now we are discussing about the organisms that have an organ system level of organization. That is, uh, they have well developed organ system like excretory system, reproductive system. They have well developed excretory, circulatory, reproductive system. So we are talking about the organ system here. Then we divided the organisms on the basis of the symmetry. So we have discussed about the radial symmetry, which was seen in sealant traits and dinophore. And we are discussing about the organisms that show bilateral symmetry. And we are focusing on the coelomates that have the true body cavity. That is, they have the true body cavity. Right? So they are coelomates. In coelomates also, we are dis we have already discussed about annelids. We have discussed about arthropods like insects in the last lecture. And in today's lecture, we will focus on the next phyla, which is the mollusk. So we will be focusing on the characteristics of mollusk and what is the different classes which are present under the uh, king uh, phylum mollusca and kingdom animalia. So, today our lecture will focus on the organisms that belong to kingdom Animalia, that have an organ system level of organization, that have bilateral symmetry, they are coelomates, that is they have true body cavity and they belong to phylum mollusca. So, the mollusk or the phylum mollusca is the second most numerous group of animals. So, this is the second most numerous group. We know that the first one is the arthropods which are the very successful organisms that belongs to the phylum arthropods they were they are highly successful in terms of evolution also and the second most numerous group of animals is the phylum mollusca approximately 93000 species of mollusk are known and again just like arthropods they also inhabit a variety of environments like they are found in marine water, they are found in fresh water, they are terrestrial, that is they are present on the land as well. So they habitat a large variety of environments like marine water, fresh water or terrestrial environment. Uh, they also vary in size from microscopic to giant squid. squid. So they might be microscopic, very uh, tiny or they may be large enough which like the giant squid. For example, the giant squid, which can land over the 20 meter and it can weigh over 450 kilograms. So, therefore, the size varies significantly. Some of the organisms are microscopic in nature. That is, they can be visualized only with the help of the microscope. They cannot be seen with the naked eyes while there are some large animals like the giant squid that can have a length of 20 meter and can weigh over the 450 kilograms. The group includes like they have variety of animals that have variety of feeding habits also. So the group includes animals which are herbivores that are dependent on the plants. Directly carnivores which in turn are dependent on the herbivores that is they eat the herbivores. Filter feeders or they may be parasitic in nature. So Therefore, the group includes a variety of animals that inhabit variety of in environment that vary greatly in size and also they vary differently in the 
feeding habits so some of them might be herbivores some of them might be carnivores they may be filter feeders or they may be parasites as well now why the term mollusk so till now we know about every phyla like for example when we were learning about arthropods we get to know why they are termed as arthropods arthro means jointed and pods means appendages right so the organisms that have jointed appendages similarly we learn about many other uh, phyla uh, the name is derived from the characteristics so the mollusk term is derived from the latin word which is mollusks that means soft so they are the soft bodied animals that is these organisms have soft body so they are soft bodied animals and hence the term mollusk so these animals are very like their body is really soft and therefore most of them secrete a hard protective shell which is made up of calcium carbonate so they body is soft but they contain a protective shell so they secrete a hard protective shell as an outer covering which is made up of calcium carbonate around the body to protect the uh, body from desiccation from the uh, injury so this shell protects the organism from injury from desiccation etc because the body is really soft it may undergo desiccation also so in order to prevent the loss of water from the body or uh, in order to prevent the drying of the cells the body is covered with a shell which is made up of calcium carbonate in most of the cases however there are a certain mollusks that we will see later in the lecture for example uh, so we will see later that uh, there are certain mollusks which do not secrete this protective shell which is made up of calcium carbonate mollusks as i mentioned are triploblastic that is they have all the three germ layers during the time of development ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm and they are two coelomates that is they have the two coelom two body cavity so they have the body cavity and they have an organ system level of organization so the level of organization is organ system level of organization so once we will uh, uh, go through that table like which i described here we will get to know about most of the uh, basic characteristics of any phyla so this table is really important to remember this figure is really important so if we remember that figure we will easily remember these characteristics of any phyla like for example mollusks are diploblastic they are coelomates they have an organ system level of organization body is unsegmented so unlike arthropods where the body was segmented where the body was divided into three parts like head thorax and abdomen and uh, in some cases the abdomen was segmented in some cases the segments was present on the heads as head as well in this case in the case of mollusk the body is unsegmented that is there is no segmentation and the variety of shapes and uh, can be seen in case of mollusk so we will see that some may be some may be by like some may have uh, may be bivalve some may be round some may be of different other shapes so therefore their body is unsegmented they have a variety of shapes and they are covered with the calcareous shell as i mentioned the shell which is made up of calcium carbonate so they have a shell which is made up of calcium carbonate however there is an exception to the un uh, unsegmented body the neo neoplena this organism belongs to phylum mollusca but it is exceptionally segmented so this exception you may remember this might be asked because this is an exception otherwise in general the mollusca are unsegmented they are bilaterally symmetrical for example you can see in this figure so this is a by wolf example so the figure is like this in this this one is the right wolf this one is the left wolf so this is a figure of a clam that belongs to the class bivalve that we will see later so this is a figure of a clam you can see that this can be divided into two equal halves through this axis of symmetry so this is the axis of symmetry and the body can be divided into two equal halves through this axis of symmetry this is the left wall this is the right wall 
and this is the plane of symmetry dividing the body into two equal halves so this is the bi uh, the molus called bilaterally symmetrical since it can only be divided into two equal halves through the single axis that is this way. if i try to divide the organism into two equal halves from this axis it will not be symmetrical therefore only one axis of symmetry is present and uh, however in some cases uh, few are secondary Play asymmetrical. For example, snails. So in snails, you might have seen that snails are quite like this short torsion. That is, they are slightly twisted towards one side. So they are this twisting in the snails leads to their asymmetrical nature. Because now, because of this twisting, they cannot be divided into two symmetrical halves. Therefore, this twisting of these snails is uh, the reason for their asymmetry. So, in most of the cases, the mollusks are bilaterally symmetrical. However, there are some cases, for example, in snails, which undergo twisting or torsion during the growth, and this twisting or torsion therefore leads to the asymmetry in them. So, uh, if I start with the basic anatomy of the of this phylum, so what we will see is the although we see that mollusks are highly diverse, we will see later also the different classes of mollusks. So they are quite diverse; they are present in different habitats. But usually, what we can say is that mollusks share a three-part bo body plan. That is, their body can be divided into like. They have their body. We can divide into a plan which consists of three parts. The first one is the visceral mass. The second one is the mantle, and third one is the foot. So the first one is the visceral mass, visceral mass, mantle, and foot. So the basic body plan of the any mollusk of any mollusk can divide can be divided into three. Body parts, three part body, visceral, mantle, and foot. So this is a basic anatomy. We can see that this is the man. Uh, this is the foot. This is the visceral mass. So if I take out the laser pointers, this is the visceral mass. This is the foot, and this is the mantle cavity. So in general, what we see is that most of the organs are present in the visceral mass. Like the digestive, this is the visceral mass. Now this region is the visceral mass. So most of the organs, like you can see, heart, gonad, or uh, like any, like for example, the digestive glands, etc., are present in the visceral mass. So the visceral mass contains the internal organs, including a highly specialized digestive tract, pair of kidneys, and reproductive organs. So gonad. Which is a part of reproductive organ, digestive gland, which is a part of digestive system, etc., are the part of visceral mass. So the visceral mass contains all the internal organs that contains, uh, like, example, digestive tract, kidney, etc. Next is the mantle. So we can see this mantle here. This mantle is the outer covering. You can see it here. This I am highlighting mantle here. So mantle is the outer covering. So this is the outer covering, which is the mantle, right? So this is the outer covering. So the mantle is a covering that lies to either side of, but does not completely enclose the visceral mass. So it does not completely enclose it, but it lies on both the sides of the visceral mass, protecting the visceral mass, basically protecting the internal organs. And the foot is a muscular organ. We know. So this the foot region is a muscular organ that may be adapted for locomotion. It may also help in the attachment. It may help in the foot cap food capturing, or a combination of functions can be placed by the can be played by the foot. So therefore, uh, the body there uh, three there is a three part body plan in the mollusk, which consists of visceral mass, mental input. The visceral mass consists of the internal organs that mainly contains digestive tract, um, kidney, which is a part of excretory system, reproductive organ, etc. Mantle is the covering that lies on both the side of the visceral mass, but does not completely enclose the visceral mass. And foot is a muscular organ 
that helps in the locomotion or in capturing of the food etc right so mental me secrete so as i mentioned the mental is the covering that covers the visceral mass so it secrete a shell and contribute to the development of gills or lungs so you can see here that this is the mental cavity this is the mental cavity here you can see here this is the mental cavity and in here the gill is present right in the mental cavity that is in the space so the space between the folds of the mantle is called the mental cavity and uh, one of the another important feature that is present in mollusk is the different kind of organ which is a tongue like organ which is the radula so you can see here that this is this part is highlighting the mouth the mouth contains the organ radula radula you can see here in this figure this in the zoomed in figure of the radula that they are the teeth like structure so this is the radula teeth you can see here this is the radula teeth right so basically the another important feature which is present in mollusk is a rasping tongue like radula so it is a rasping tongue like radula an organ that bears many rows of teeth so you can see here like these are the radular teeth and radula is a tongue like organ that bears rows of tiny teeth that point backwards so therefore it is help in obtaining the food so this is important feature which is the radula which is present in the mouth of the mollusk which is a teeth like like tongue like structure that contains the teeth that we called as radular teeth also uh that although these animals are coelomates what we see is that so although these animals are coelomates they are true they have true coelom that is they are coelomates but the coelom is highly reduced because we can see that the body cavity is reduced it is occupied by the organs which are getting developed with time as we see that they have an organ system level of organization so they have an heart they have gills for the respiration they have pair of kidneys so as the organs are increasing therefore the body cavity reduced so the body cavity or the true coelom is reduced and is largely limited to the region around the heart in the mollusk so it is mainly you can see here that uh, in this we can see that the body cavity is usually predominant the coelom is usually you can clearly visualize around the heart mostly around the heart it is visible it is limited to the region which is around the heart in the mollusk so it is limited to the uh, limited near the heart only as most of the region is occupied by the other organs most mollusk have an open circulatory system however there are certain as i am saying most mollusk therefore there are certain exceptions that have closed to circulatory system as well we will see them that what are those examples in this since they have an open circulatory system we know that the heart pumps the blood directly into the sinus which is the cavity so the heart pumps the blood more properly called the hemolymph we know that in this case we call the blood as hemolymph and it is similar to the interstitial fluid since there it is an open circulatory system there are no concept of blood vessels therefore the hemolymph is same as the interstitial fluid and uh, through uh, vessels it is uh, finally released into the sinuses which is the cavities collectively called as the hemocele so hemo means blood we know hemo hemo word is related to blood and uh, seal means cavity we know so hemo seal so it is the cavity so basically it is released into the hemo seal as i mentioned in the last class also in some arthropods also we see that they have a hemocyanin as a pigment rather than the hemoglobin hemoglobin which is a respiratory pigment in vertebrates like humans hemocyanin is the respiratory pigment in most of the arthropods and in mollusk so it is blue in color why because it is cyanin cyanin means copper cyanin word is related to copper and since copper is present therefore it, this this gives the color blue to the this pigment right this hemocyanin because of the presence of copper which is uh, giving it a blue color 
So the color of the blood in this case is blue due to the presence of a pigment which is hemocyanin instead of hemoglobin. Nutrients and oxygen diffuse into the tissues from these sinuses instead of being carried into the tissues by capillaries because they have an open circulatory system. Like for example, in closed circulatory system, we see that microscopic blood vessels are present that diffuse the nutrients and oxygen into the tissues. But in this case, from the sinus directly, the nutrient and oxygen is carried into the tissues. The nervous system, if I talk about the nervous system of mollusk, it consists of several ganglia. It is connected by the nerve cords. The amount of syphilization, that is the brain development and the head part which is occupied. And sensory organs varies from non-existent in clams. For example, in clams, you will see that syphilization is almost absent. Fine. Too complex in squid and octopus. So, there are various sense organs which are present. For example, the first one is the eye, which is present over a stalk called omatophore in some mollusks. Statocyst or lithocyst for body equilibrium in the foot. So, this is helping in maintaining the body equilibrium. And third one is the osph osphradium. Osphradium is a chemoreceptor or an olfactory receptor. So, chemoreceptor is something that senses the chemical. Olfactory receptor is something that senses the smell sense of a smell. So, chemoreceptor and the olfactory receptor for testing chemical nature of water, for example, pH. So, osphradium, so osphradium is a receptor that helps in, uh, like, which is a receptor for chemoreceptor or olfactory receptor. Statocyst or lithocyst helps in maintaining the body equilibrium in the foot and eyes, the sense organ which is present over a stalk called omatophore some mollus. The mo Mollusks also exhibit variation in mobility. For example, there are certain mollusks which are sessile. That is, they are fixed. They do not move. They do not move. While there are certain, for example, snails that are extremely slow moving. We know snails are very slow moving. Squid, which are fast moving and are really active predators. So, depending upon what are their feeding habits also, like for example, oysters are sessile. They are present on the surface and they feed on the plankton while snails are extremely slow moving and squid are the fast moving active predators. So since they are predators, they have to be fast moving. They have to catch the prey. Mollusks are, most mollusks are di dioecious. Dioecious we know, I have already discussed in most of the classes. Dioecious means the male and female are different. That is, the male reproductive organ is present in a different organism and female reproductive organ is present in different organism. That is, two organisms are needed for the fertilization. Two organisms are needed for the fertilization or fertilization. Because male and female reproductive system are present in different organisms. And the fertilization usually occurs externally. That is, the sperms are released outside in the environment. Egg is also released outside in the environment. Sperm comes in contact with the egg. It fuses. The fusion happens and the fertilization takes place. So, the fertilization is external. That is, it takes place outside the body of the female. In some mollusks, uh, as I mentioned when I was... Uh, talking about some other phyla that the zygote hatches and undergoes two larval stages. So, we have already learned about Prochophore larva. So, in some mollusks, zygote hatches and undergoes two larval stages, that is the Prochophore and Valiger, before becoming a young adult. However, in some cases like bivalves, which is a class of mollusk, it is a class of mollusk, phyla mollusca, so, it is a class of phylum mollusca with a third larval stage, which is a glochidia. So, this is the uh, uh, summary of different organ system that we discussed. So, the firstly, we discussed that they have a visceral mass, they have mantle, then they have foot. So, by color scheme, you can see here, whatever is marked here in this color. So, all this is inside the visceral mass. This part that is the gonads, the digestive system, stum consists of stomach, mouth, esophagus, etc. are all part of the visceral mass. 
mental is the outer covering that helps in the um like releasing in the uh, outer covering so it helps in um the shell formation um gills are the organs that helps in the respiration anus is the outer opening that helps in releasing the waste and then we have foot so you can see that this is the foot that helps in the locomotion so if i talk about the circulatory system we know that most of them have the open circulatory system so they have dorsally located heart pumps circulatory fluid called the hemolymph through the arteries into the sinuses the organs of the mollusk are thus continuously bathed in the hemolymph so organs are directly bathed organs are continuously continually bathed in hemolymph so what does that mean so this means that this is usually happen in the open circulatory system and you can see that they have a long digestive tract here so this is the long digestive tract they have a proper digestive system they have a mouth they have stomach that consists of enzymes so they have hepatopancreatic enzymes so they have hepatopancreatic uh, and then they have esophagus which is the food pipe and uh, they have stomach then they have a long digestive tract through which the food undergoes digestion and absorption and finally the undigested food is removed out with the help of the anus is thrown out with the help of the anus so the long digestive tract is coiled in the visceral mass in the mouth as i mentioned they have radula which is the rasp like feeding organ and it is uh, this belt of backward curved teeth repeatedly thrust outward and then retracts into the mouth scraping and scooping like a back hoe so this just scrap just perform this scraping action and help in catching the food obtaining the food the nervous system consists of as i mentioned a nerve ring around the esophagus from which the nerve cords extend so you can see here if you can see here around the esophagus this nerve ring extended and uh, this nerve ring is present and this is extending as a nerve cord into the dorsal region so in the nephridia so nephridium is the excretory organ uh, called nephridia excretory organs called nephridia remove the metabolic waste from the hemolymph all these are the different parts which are present and they have different organ system as i mentioned so they have well developed circulatory system they have well developed digestive system nervous system and excretory system now it comes the classification of this phyla so molus can be classified into seven different classes based on some differences which are present in the uh, organisms belonging to these classes so the first class is aplecophora aplecophora the second is monoplecophora the third one is the polyplecophora next is bivalvia the next class is gastropoda next class is cephalopoda and the last class is scaphopoda so the first one is a aplecophora second is monoplecophora third one is polyplecophora fourth is bivalvia fifth is gastropoda sixth is cephalopoda and for, uh, last one is the scaphopoda so these are the seven classes in which the phylum mollusca can be divided so we will learn about these one by one the first one is the aplecophora so as the name suggest bearing no plates so monoplecophora will be bearing one plate they will be polyplecophora will be bearing many plates right okay. so aplecophora class aplecophora bears no plate it includes worm like animals primarily found in the benthic marine habitats you can see here they are worm like in structures they have a posterior chamber in which and they have a mouth through which they take up takes up the food then they have a ventral groove the most of the epidermis is covered with the argon aragonite spicules on the epidermis and they lack the calcareous shell so calcareous shell which is present in most of the mollusk is absent in aplecophora they have a rudimentary mental cavity like their mental cavity is also not well developed it's of no use because obviously they do not have shell mental cavity main function of the mental cavity as we mentioned is 
that it secretes the shell so they have rudimentary mental cavity and they lack eyes tentacles and nephridia so they are very a primitive type of mollusk you can say that uh, like some sense organs as well they lack like excretory organs as well they have rudimentary mental cavity so they are worm like structures and uh, they lack like the shell the next is the monoplecophora so as the name suggests as i mentioned a plecophora means bearing no plate monoplecophora means bearing one plate it possesses a single cap like shell that encloses the body so the morphology of the shell and the underlying animal can vary from circular to ovate and a looped digestive system multiple pairs of excretory organs many gills and a pair of gonads is present in these animals so like uh, basically the many um, like looped digestive system excretory organs many gills etc are present in these animals unlike a plecophora where the excretory organs or nephridia was absent the monoplecophorans were believed extinct and uh, only when the discovery of neoplania glathea was done in 1952 it was found that they are still existing so this is the dorsal view of the monoplecophoran in which there is a single plate you can see here this is a single plate that acts as a shell and this is a ventral view in the ventral ventral view this is the anterior lip which is present above the mouth the mouth helps in and taking up the food and they have phylum post oral tentacles tentacles were absent in uh, a plecophora while they are present in uh, mono plecophora then they have mental which was reduced or rudimentary in a plecophora but is present in this and uh, they have foot so they have well developed foot that helps in the attachment or in movement they have pedal groove they have tiny tinidia so tinidia are the gills tinidiums are the gills so this is a tinidia and uh, they have gills 1 2 3 4 5 pairs of like five pairs then they have anus that helps in excreting out the waste and this is the outer covering which is the shell this white portion is the shell so this like they are comparatively well developed as compared to the uh, a plecophora the next is polyplecophora as the name suggests bearing many plates they are commonly known as chitins and they bear an armor like eight plate shell this is really important they have an eight plated shell so these animals have a broad ventral foot that it, that is adapted for suction to the rocks and other substrates and mental that extends beyond the shell in the form of a girdle so calcareous spines may be present on the girdle to offer the extra protection from predators respiration as we see in case of monoplecophora here also it is facilitated by the presence of tinidia which is the gills that are present ventrally the animal possess a radula we see that they have radula in the mouth it is a teeth like structure the animal possess a radula which is a teeth like structure that is modified for scraping the nervous system is not well developed it is rudimentary with only the buccal or cheek ganglia present at the anterior end eye spots are absent in these animals uh, not uh, like just like a plecophora where the eye spots were absent a single pair of nephridia are is present for the excretion so this is you can see here uh, this is an example of uh, a polyplecophora which is the chitin so it has eight plates so this is if we start counting we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and this is the eighth plate so there are eight plates this is an important characteristic so this is a shell characteristic of mollusk in the clade polyplecophora so this is if we see this is the anterior wall this is the, uh, the posterior wall and uh, on the anterior side we have mouth which is present then we have tinidia gills then uh, we see that the mantle is extended up to the girdle we see here now like we learned about this girdle that the mantle extends beyond the shell in the form of a girdle so girdle is present then we have a foot which is flat so we see here also that the foot where mm, uh ha huh, so the ventral foot is present and it is adapted for the suction so you can see here that the foot is adapted for the suction 
and then they have an anus which is the opening that split out of waste material and digested waste material the next class is the class gastropoda so name itself suggests gastro is related to stomach right so animals in the class gastropoda means stomach food it includes well known mollusks like snails slugs conch sea hares and sea butterflies so gastro gastropoda includes shell bearing species as well as species with a reduced shell so they have both type of species in some of them they have shell while in some others they have reduced shell the animals are asymmetrical in nature so as i mentioned most of the mollusks are bilaterally symmetrical however there are certain exceptions for example gastropods which are asymmetrical they are usually present uh, and usually present a coiled shell so as i mentioned snails for example they are slightly twisted you know due to this twisting or torsion the snails lose their symmetry so the therefore these animals are asymmetrical and they usually present a coiled shell the visceral mass in the shell species display torsion around the perpendicular axis on the center of the foot which is the key characteristic so this torsion or this twisting is the key characteristic of this group and along with the foot that is modified the foot is modified for crawling here the foot is modified for crawling while in case of polyplacophora the foot was modified for the suction that is helping in the attachment with the substrate right most gastropods bear a head with tentacles they have well developed tentacles eyes and a style omitted that we discussed a complex radula is used by the digestive system so and aids in the ingestion of the food the mental cavity encloses the tenedia as well as a pair of nephridia so tenedia is again the gill and they have a pair of nephridia for the excretion right so this is the um example of snail so this is the mouth and this is the anus you can see here that the anus is really close to the mouth here because of the twisting so because of this twisting or the torsion the anus has come close to the mouth this is the mental cavity this is stomach and this is intestine so the result of torsion in a gastropod because of a torsion or twisting of the visceral mass during embryonic development and digestive tract is coiled you can see here the digestive tract is highly coiled and the anus is near the anterior end of the animal right and like this you can see here the uh, anus is present on the posterior towards the posterior wall towards the posterior end while in this case the anus is present on the anterior end because of the twisting or torsion so this is an important characteristic like the important character is the torsion or the twisting which is present in gastropods because of which the digestive tract gets highly coiled and the anus is present on the anterior end instead of the instead of the posterior end so instead of the posterior end the anus is present on the anterior end near the mouth they have well developed tentacles they have well developed eyes they have well developed nephridia as well so these are examples for example a land snail and this is a sea slug so this is uh, important as i mentioned that these this group gastropods con consist of animals which have shell as well as animals which have lost the shell so the snails consist of shell they have a shell protective covering while if i talk about a sea slug which is the uh, the nudie branch or sea slugs lost their shell during the evolution so these are animals that belong to phylum gast uh, mollusk uh, class gastropoda but these like the shells so sea slugs are the example they do not have they do not have shell right so they do not have shell while the land snail have the shell the next is the bivalvia so bivalvia is a name suggests two shells it includes clams oysters mussels 
scallops and geoducks members of this class are found in marine as well as in freshwater habitats name suggests bivalves are enclosed in a pair of shells bivalves right by means two so therefore uh, they are enclosed in a pair of shells you can see here this is the first shell this is the second shell valves are commonly called as shells that are hinged at the dorsal end by the ligaments as well as the shell teeth so they are jointed here this is the hinge portion hinged portion the joint portion where the two shells are joined the overall morphology you can see here is usually laterally flattened head region is poorly developed eye spots and stratocyst may be absent in some species while if you will see in this example they have dark blue spots which are eye spots these animals are suspension feeders so they that is they eat materials like plankton that suspend over the surface of water so they are suppose this is the surface of water here they feed upon the plankton which are the small plants that are present on the surface of water and therefore they are suspension feeders the class of mollusk like a radula because we know that the function of radula is mostly scraping sorry for the error in the spelling uh the function of uh, scapula this we can relate ourselves also like right because when we know the function of radula is scraping and this and an these animals do not need any scraping tool because they are suspension feeders they feed on the plankton therefore they do not require radula as such and therefore uh, the radula is absent a pair of pinidia facilitate respiration whereas a pair of nephridia bring about the excretion and the osmoregulation they often possess a large mental cavity in some species posterior edges of the mental may fuse to form the two siphons so th there is one incurrent siphon and one that is towards the outer side that is ex that is excurrent so one is to take in and the other one is to exude the water one of the function of the mental is to secrete the shell some bivalves are like for example we know oyster and mussels they possess a unique ability where they can secrete and deposit a calcareous nacre or mother of pearl around the foreign particles so whenever these organisms take up any foreign particles they secrete some shell like structure and resulting in the formation of the pearl so you might have seen that the pearls are obtained from the oysters or the mussels so therefore since the pearls we know are very expensive therefore this property has been commercially exploited to produce the pearls so these are the natural pearls pearls are usually orig originated from these sources like from oysters so this is an anatomy of a clam clam belongs to this bivalvia you can see here that they have mental cavity well developed they have well developed gonads they have gills and they have incurrent siphon as i mentioned through which the water flow takes place and then they have excurrent siphon through which the water is exuded out that is exuded out from the body so they have two siphons which is uh, which i want to show you here like they have incurrent through this figure they have an incurrent siphon and they have an excurrent siphon the body is uh, again surrounded by mantle they have an hinge areas because they are bivalve therefore they have an hinge area where both the shells this is the upper shell this is the lower shell so they have an hinge area where the shells gets attached so food particles suspended in water enters through the incurrent siphon are collected by the gills so these are then collected by the gills through which they are passes uh, like through the cilia they are passed into the to the mouth the next class is the cephalopoda so gastropoda means be uh, related to stomach and um, so cephalopoda means head foot animals it includes octopi squids cuttlefish and nautilus <coughs> so these are the examples of cephalopods they are shell bearing animals so they have shell they are mollusks with reduced shell so although they contain shell but their shell is reduced they display vivid coloration they are of uh, very different colors typically seen in squids and octopi and they are this coloration is used for the camouflage that is they use this property to uh, catch their prey in order to 
uh, like to make false impression on the prey so that they can be catched all animals in this class are carnivorous predators and they have beak like jaws at the anterior ends all cephalopods show the presence of very well developed nervous system they have well developed eyes they have a exception as i was mentioning that since all other mollusks are have open circulatory system cephalopods are the ones that have closed circulatory system fine okay? the foot is low lobed and developed into tentacles and a funnel which is used in the funnel used as which is used as a mode of locomotion suckers are present on the tentacles in the octopi and squid tinidae are closed enclosed in a large mental cavity and are serviced by large blood vessels each with its own heart associated with it the mantle has siphonophores that facilitate the exchange of water just like that uh, gastropoda locomotion in cephalopod is facilitated by ejecting a stream of water for propulsion this is called as a jet propulsion and a pair of nephridia is present within the mantle cavity ha huh. very important thing is sexual dimorphism is seen in the class of animals and uh, sexual dimorphism means males appear differently than the females differently than females so males appear differently than females members of a species mate and the female then lay the eggs in a secluded and protective niche female of some species care for the eggs for an extended period of time and may end up dying during that time period cephalopods such as squids and octopi also produce sepia ha so we know that squids or octopi octopus you might have seen in cartoons as well that they secrete dark ink as a part of their defense system which is squirted upon the predator to assist in a quick gateway reproduction in cephalopods is different from the other mollusk in that the egg hatches to produce a juvenile adult without undergoing any larval stages like in earlier we see that they have trochophore and veligar uh, larval stages but in this it is direct and uh, do not involve any um, larval stage egg is directly hatched into the adult without undergoing any larva but this larval stage is not there So it is a direct development. Example includes squids are speedy carnivores with beak-like jaws and well-developed eyes. You can see here. Octopus are considered among the most intelligent invertebrates. We know this. Chambered nautiluses are the only living cephalopods with the external shell. We see we say in the starting that shell is present, but in most of the cases that is the reduced shell. So the chambered nautiluses are the only living cephalopods with an external shell. the last class is the scaphoda members of the uh, class scaphoda which means broad feet are known colloquially as tusk shells or tooth shells uh, for example uh, dentalium which is few of the remo- remaining scaphoid genera scaphoids are usually buried in sand with anterior end opening exposed to water so they appeared as shell like structure and they have po- two openings one opening is here and the other opening is here these animals bear a single conical shell which has both ends open the head is rudimentary protrudes out of the posterior end of the shell so this is the posterior end this is the anterior end head is present on the posterior end both feet right the animals do not possess eyes they but they have a radula as well as foot modified into tentacles with a bulbulous end known as capitulate Capitulate serves to catch and manipulate the prey. Tinidae are absent in these animals as a excretory organ. So you can see here they appear as the tusk of the animals, right? Dentalium, for example, dentalium. So uh, Antilles vulgaris shows the classic dentalid shape that gives animals their common name as tusk shell, right? So they appear as tusk-like. So these are some of the examples which are mentioned in NCERT. Also, you need to remember the scientific name as well as the common name of these animals. For example, the pila, apple snail, pink tada, which is a pearl oyster, which is usually cultured in order to obtain the pearls. Sepia, which is a cuttlefish, loligo, squid, octopus, devilfish, aplysia, see here, dentalium, which is a tusk shell, and chitoplera. which is the chitin so we studied about chitin dentalium we learn about sea here we learn about octopus squid um 
apples oyster and apple snails so we learn about these examples and how they belong to different classes what are the characteristics of each and every class and uh, so with this we end up in learning about the phylum mollusca and in the next class we will take up the phylum echinodermata and if the time permits we will also uh, we will also we can also start with the hemichordata so we will learn about what is hemichordates what is the characteristics of echinoderms in the next class with this i would like to end today's session thank you all for attending it thank you